And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs, a time when a special man came forward a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear. A man whom they took prisoner and hid away. A man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, Olam shall, shall you hey wav hey. Wav hey. The, universe the universe of you, of you hey, hey wav hey. 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 Brought, Brought to you, to you by, by the nation, nation of you, you hey, 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 hey. Working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death. This is your choice in this, the year 6001, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the Day of Judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world, and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse. And it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world? is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end, the Messiah would be revealed. And at that time, he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh In order to have peace, love and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws and statutes of God yud heh wav then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. 
We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yisrael. We shall continue our discussion of the commandments and their relationship to the fact that to dress the Garden of Eden was the first commandment ever given to man, Adam. Last week, we continued our discussion of dress. We showed you that another meaning of the word dress is transgress, which was defined as to go beyond a limit. Go, beyond, and limit were defined. We concluded from the word dress and its relationship to transgress that Yahweh gave Adam the freedom to travel outside the scope of the geographical boundary where he had been put in the Garden of Eden and still keep the commandments of Yahweh. The scope of Adam's boundary was identified in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. We discussed the fact that Yahweh told Adam to be fruitful, to multiply, replenish, and subdue the earth, as well as to have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth, thus constituting the earth as the scope of Adam's geographical boundary. The word be was defined as to continue in existence. The words fruitful and multiply were also defined. Based upon the meaning of these words, we asserted that Yahweh told Adam to go beyond the geographical boundary wherein he had been placed and to continue to be abundantly productive and that his productivity increase in number. From the word replenish, we determined that Adam was to continue to indoctrinate people with the divine principles or laws of Yahweh, which, according to Psalm chapter 19, verse 7, will convert the soul and make wise the simple. Subdue and dominion asserted that Adam was to go outside the geographical boundary to conquer and bring every living thing into subjection to the divine laws of Yahweh. We also discussed that Adam was to have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. When fish and fowl were decoded, we learned that these words were used allegorically. We pointed out that fish of the sea represented those lacking intelligence, the lower class, that the fowl of the air represented the learned members of society, and that every creeping thing that moveth upon the earth represented the middle class. We summarize that as the descendants of Adam keep the commandments of Yahweh, all the families of the earth shall experience peace, love, and harmony. Today, we will continue to discuss the specifics of the direct commandment that Yahweh gave to Adam in the Garden of Eden, which was to dress it. As stated in the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, copyright 1990, of the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary, on page 84, dress in Hebrew is a bod, and one of its meanings is worshiper. We discussed worshiper from one point of view in an earlier program, but today we want to look at worshiper from yet another point of view. According to the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodale, copyright 1978, on page 1,352, worshiper is equivalent to celebrant. Webster's New World Dictionary, Third College Edition, copyright 1994, on page 225, describes celebrant as a person who celebrates. Documented in the Random House College Dictionary, Revised Edition, copyright 1988, on page 216, 
celebrate means to observe a day or commemorate an event with ceremonies. On page 918, the word observe is defined as to obey, comply with, or conform to as a law. And on page 269, commemorate means to honor the memory of by some observance. Thus, Yahweh commanded Adam to obey, comply with, or conform to as a law, a day, or to honor the memory of an event by some observance. Let's examine this even further. Webster's Universal College Dictionary, copyright 1997, on page 276, defines event as the outcome of anything. On page 562, outcome is defined as a final product. Therefore, to dress the Garden of Eden from the word worshiper means that Yahweh commanded Adam to obey, comply with, or conform to a day as law, and to honor the memory of a final product by some observance with ceremonies. Referenced in Webster's New World College Dictionary, copyright 1997, on page 229, ceremony is defined as a formal act or set of formal acts established by authority as proper to a special occasion. Macmillan Dictionary for Children, copyright 1989, page 294, defines formal as following strict rules. Consequently, Yahweh commanded Adam to obey, comply with, or conform to a day to honor the memory of a final product by some observance which follows strict rules established by authority as proper to a special occasion. What was the special occasion or event that Adam was commanded to properly observe? The answer can be found in Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Let us open the Bible and read what it says. And it reads, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. The special occasion or event that Adam was commanded to honor the memory of was the finished or final product made by Yahweh of the heavens, stars, planets, constellations, and so on, and the earth and all the host creation of them. The day that Adam was to obey, comply with, or conform to in honoring this event was the seventh day, which is verified in Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, which reads, And on the seventh day, Yahweh ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And Yahweh blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which Yahweh created and made. We see in this scripture that on the seventh day, Yahweh ended his work. We also see that Yahweh blessed and sanctified the seventh day, because in it he had rested from all his work, which he created and made. In summary, the word worshiper, as it relates to dress, sets forth the fact that Yahweh commanded Adam to obey, comply with, or conform to as law the observance of the seventh day as a day of rest, to observe and to honor the memory of him for all his work, his creation, which he, Yahweh, created and made. Next week, we will continue to discuss dress from the perspective of worshiper and what Adam, his descendants, and the families of the earth are commanded to do in relationship of the seventh day. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. 
I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear witness to you today that the One all religions have been speaking of for almost 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening, and join us next week as we continue our discussion on the commandments of Yahweh. Welcome to Exodus, release our God to us. It was prophesied that when the Son of Man appears, there would be a time of great and terrible natural disasters. This is Judgment Day, and yud he wav -He is plaguing and judging this world. America is suffering from one tragic disaster after another. Why? Because this proud country is responsible for persecuting and holding the son of yud he wav he yud he wav he beit nun sofit yud he wav he in prison for crimes he did not commit and refuses to let him go. This is the reason yud he wav he is judging America and the world with arctic cold temperatures and blocks of ice along with sleet and blinding snow. Let us read some very important questions in Job, chapter 38, verses 22 and 23. Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or has thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I, Yudhe Wavhe, have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war. Headline, Blowing Snow, Bitter Cold Plague, Much of USA. Snow stranded people in cars and trapped them in their homes. Headline, Cold Front Brings Death to Mexico. A cold front crossing Mexico left countless people dead. Headline, coal brings U.S. to its knees. Temperatures fell below zero across more than one-third of the nation. With headlines like these, it can be said that we have entered into the treasures of the snow. What do you think? Must we continue to suffer from bitter, bone-chilling cold and ice? Of course not. And yud he wav he beit nun sofit yud he wav he holds the key. However, until the release of yud he wav he beit nun sofit yud he wav he, the present course of natural disasters worldwide shall continue to get worse and worse and worse. Shalom. And we'll see you next week on Exodus. Release our God to us. Who 
is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the pass with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. Yahweh said to Abraham, By myself have I sworn, for because you have not withheld your son, your only son, that in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your Abraham's seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you, Abraham, have obeyed my voice. Genesis chapter 22, verses 16 through 18. Yahweh repeated this promise to Isaac, the son of Abraham. He said unto Isaac, Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you, and will bless you. For unto you, and unto your seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham your father. And I, Yahweh, will make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto your seed all these countries, and in your Isaac's seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Genesis chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. Yahweh again repeated this promise to Jacob, the son of Isaac, and he said, I am Yahweh, God of Abraham your father, and God of Isaac. The land whereon you lay, to you will I give it, and to your seed, and your seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in you, Jacob, and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Genesis chapter 28, verses 13 and 14. We want to call to your attention the critical circumstances for the family in each case of both Isaac and Jacob. This promise is also emphasized in the New Testament. Those of us who repent for breaking the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of Yahweh are the children of the prophets and the covenant which Yahweh made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in your seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed.
remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> that just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleichem. According to the covenant made between Yahweh and our forefather Abraham, Yahweh ben Yahweh has been sent to us, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, first. Yahweh ben Yahweh has come teaching the laws of Yahweh, thus giving us an opportunity to turn away from breaking the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of Yahweh. When we, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, accept Yahweh ben Yahweh and follow his divine teachings, then all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now, we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikardesh Yimeyaka, Tavo Malkuteyaka, Yiaseh Razonka, Kivah Shemayim Kain Ba'aretz, Et Lekum Kukainu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu, Al Kati Enu, Kimosha Sol Kim, Gamanak Nu, La Koteom La Nu, Ve'ar Tefi Enu, Lede Nisayom, Kim Kal Seinu, Min Hara, Killer Ka, Hamam Laha, Ve'ha Givera, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father, Yahweh, and his Son, Yahweh bin Yahweh, love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleikum. To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, Call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, ask about the special discount on The Sower of Good Seeds by Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the Divine Mind of Yahweh Ben Yahweh on the Internet at the address on the screen.